Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching this video. Thank you so much for clicking on it, I guess. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Chainlink. I already talked about Chainlink before, where I explained more of the fundamentals. But today, we're going to talk about partnerships, because Chainlink announces partnership almost every single week. I think it's one of the crypto projects with the most partnerships out there. The fundamentals of Chainlink are just that good and large corporations and financial institutions just want to jump on board so they don't miss out. And yeah, Chainlink is the industry leader when it comes to oracles. So let's just dive into the biggest partnerships they have and explain them a little. So imagine if you have a computer, right? And on the computer, there's a program and that program is called Smart Contracts. Now, that program runs on a software called blockchain. And smart contracts, they can do all these great things, all these automated things, but unfortunately it can't access any information outside of its blockchain, out of its outside of its server. So that's where Chainlink comes in, where they bridge the smart contracts together with data from outside the blockchain. And they do this using a decentralized network of computers called oracles. So to make sure that these oracles are provided with the correct data, they get rewarded for it with link tokens, the native token of the Chainlink ecosystem. As many oracles are procuring many points of data, no single point of failure can disrupt the entire network, making the data more reliable and the network decentralized. So Chainlink is not the only project that does things with, with oracles. As you can see here, some of the biggest competitors, you have Teller, Band Protocol, API3, Dia, or Dia, and Pith, Pith, Pith Network. Um, they all do things all with their unique use cases, but none come even close to what Chainlink is doing and none come even close with the amount of partnerships that Chainlink has. And that's why we're here in this video. So let's dive into the Chainlink ecosystem here and let's start with the node operators. So there are currently 94 node operators. I just listed uh, the biggest ones. I'll drop some links in the description and you can see a full list of, of all the node operators out there. But there are some big names in here as Coinbase, Binance, Kraken, Huobi, uh, Vodafone, and then I just took another as an example, uh, stake.link. So these are the entities that power and secure every Oracle network running on the Chainlink network. Chainlink works together with over 100 blockchains, 103 to be exact. You can see Cardano, BNB, Ethereum, Polkadot, Matic, Cosmos, Hyperledger, and BSN, which is a blockchain from China. Chainlink also has 103 current data providers. You have Associated Press, Big Name, World Weather Online, T-Systems. You can find a full list in the description below. I don't want to go over all of them, but here are some bigger ones. These are the main use cases that Chainlink is involved with. It's a big list. Chainlink is everywhere. I definitely recommend you to check out their website if you haven't already. But let's dive into the first category of partnerships, which is the tech giants slash enterprises. First of all, I picked Google Cloud. So Google Cloud has been collaborating with Chainlink ever since 2019. I'm not going to read these texts every time. You can pause the video if you want to. Basically, they have been integrating Google Cloud data into Chainlink's decentralized Oracle network that enhances the ability to provide reliable and tamper-proof data to smart contracts. Chainlink also works with Google BigQuery. Also, most of this data is from a website called ChainlinkEcosystem.com, so you can check everything out there. Then we have Amazon or AWS, Amazon Web Services. They announced a partnership in the very first SmartCon, which is an annual event of Chainlink. And uh, here we had a guy from Amazon explaining uh, their partnership and they are launching a Chainlink node. Then we have Sony. This is a very recent partnership uh, announced, I think, last week. Sony launched a blockchain called Sonium and they chosen or they choose Chainlink as and they and they picked Chainlink as their premium launch partner. You can go to the Twitter of Chainlink for the full announcement. But again, here they're integrating Chainlink's Oracle network. Associated Press, this is a very big partnership. Associated Press is one of the largest uh, news organizations in the world. Uh, this partnership got announced in the year 2021. And they're launching an official Chainlink node to, uh, again, here to bring high quality economic data, sports outcomes and financial and business financials into the blockchain. Vodafone is a very big telecommunication platform. Chainlink partners with a lot of telecommunication platforms. So I'll go through all of them rather quickly, but most of them are used to, as it says here, enhancing security, interoperability. Most of them join the chain network as node operators. Another one is the Deutsche Telekom. It's one of the biggest uh, telecommunication platforms here in Europe. 
especially, well, this one is in Germany, um, and they have been a node operator for Chainlink since 2020. And they also support Chainlink staking. Then we have Swisscom and STC Bahrain. Swisscom is a leading Swiss telecom company, and STC Bahrain is a leading Middle Eastern telecom company. Again, Chainlink loves telecommunication companies, but we're all for it. Uh, there are big names, big partnerships. And now we dive into the second most interesting category of partnerships, the financial institutions. Let's immediately talk about the biggest one, which is SWIFT. SWIFT collaborates with Chainlink to enhance blockchain interoperability with their CCIP services, and they're mainly focused on tokenizing assets and to transfer that across multiple blockchain networks. SWIFT is a communication platform that banks across the world use to communicate with each other, and uh, they're kind of experimenting with Chainlink services to... Uh, yeah, to enhance the interoperability between those different blockchains. And the main overlapping goal is also to bridge the traditional finance with the Web3 blockchain world. Here you can see a case study that got released in 2023, where Chainlink and Swift are working with a bunch of banks. You can see them here. We have ANZ, PNB Paribas, BNY Mellon, Citibank, Clearstreams, Euroclear, um, SDX and DTCC. But big news, Swift also participated in last year's SmartCon with their director of strategy, Jonathan Ehrenfield, joining Sergey Nazarov, the co-founder of Chainlink, on stage. It's all on YouTube. I definitely recommend you to watch that video as well. And this is the Smart Nav pilot report. This is a kind of report case study that DTCC, which is a, a big financial institution, did together with um, 10 other banks and major financial institutions and Chainlink. This happened in 2024, so not so long ago. And it's kind of a big report where they are evaluating and seeing how they can integrate DLT technologies, distributed ledger technologies, into the uh, asset management space. So super interesting to see that Chainlink is working together with these major names. You have JP Morgan and Franklin Templeton. Templeton will be speaking as well at this year's SmartCon. So uh, again, something to keep an eye out for. We also have ANZ, so Australian and New Zealand Banking Group. Last year, they announced a collaboration with Chainlink, where they also created a case study together, showcasing how financial institutions can leverage Chainlink CCIP to provide their clients with the ability to trade and settle tokenized assets across public and private blockchains. Another announcement not so long ago that I wanted to include, 29 Shares is a Bitcoin and Ethereum ETF provider, and they're using Chainlink's proof of reserve to enhance transparency of the Bitcoin reserves that they're using in their Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs. Another very interesting partnership is a partnership with Signum, which is a bank. Fidelity is a financial institution that has different funds and they work together to bring net asset value or the NAV data on chain where they focus on Fidelity's international 6.9 billion institutional liquidity fund. And they're using Chainlink to provide real-time transparent data for tokenized assets. Going back to BSN, as you remember, BSN is a blockchain that's working with Chainlink. BSN, or blockchain-based service network, is a network that's linked to the Chinese government. And it's interesting to see, because in 2019, Chinese President Xi Jinping declared that China needs to seize the opportunities presented by blockchain technology. And ever since, China has been silently building this platform that aims to facilitate the deployment of blockchain technology for different Chinese companies. And uh, they integrated Chainlink Oracles back in 2020 to bring real-world data into their network. Then the final one I want to talk about is the government of Hong Kong. The guy you see here on screen that's next to Sergey is the Undersecretary of, of Treasuries from Hong Kong. He talked in last year's SmartCon and he also will be talking this year's SmartCon, in, which will be happening in Hong Kong. The Hong Kong Tourism Board and Invest HK, or Hong Kong, a government agency responsible for attracting foreign direct investment, were both heavily involved into recruiting SmartCon to Hong Kong. As you can see, uh, if you go to the website of SmartCon this year, you'll see that uh, a lot of Hong Kong-based partners are helping setting up uh, this event. Chainlink is also involved in the creation of a Hong Kong dollar-based stablecoin called HKDR, and they use Chainlink CCIP and proof of reserve services to facilitate it. 
and yeah all of this super interesting to to see and hopefully some major announcements will be made in this year's SmartCon as the Under Secretary of Treasuries from Hong Kong will be present there too and will be speaking. To end of this video, I want to show that uh, we recently crossed 15 trillion dollars of total transaction value enabled on the Chainlink network or the Chainlink ecosystem. And here you can see some reasons why Chainlink is a global standard. With all these partnerships, there's really no one that can come even close to what Chainlink is doing. So um, yeah, I'll be speaking at SmartCon myself. I'm super excited to be part of this community. And I hope you enjoyed this video. There are so many other partnerships that Chainlink has. I can't go over all of them in videos. So please check out their website. Check out chainlinkecosystem.com to, to find more information about the other partners. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and comment. You know the drill. I'll see you next time with a new video. But for now, I wish you a very good day. Go touch some grass and I see you in the next video. Bye.